say yes and. Agree, don't deny. Accept offers and gifts. Be specific. Listen fully. Accept the reality given to you. Go with the flow. Share focus, give and take. Silence can be powerful. Commit 100%. Be in the moment. Those are some of the guidelines for performing improvisation. Those also happen to be some of the guidelines for being with a person who is living with Alzheimer's. My name is Mundy Carter. I have a degree in philosophy and theater, so I can really think about not working. <laughs> I met my wife, Karen, while performing improv. My name's Karen Stobie. I love performing, but I'm lousy at memorization, so I took up improv 30 years ago. My dad, Manfred, passed away from Alzheimer's disease in October of 2000, and my mom, Virginia, has been living with Alzheimer's for the past 13 years. I realized in caregiving for both of my parents that the guidelines for improv and the guidelines for being with a person with Alzheimer's are parallel. And we say guidelines because really there are no rules for either. Also, you can't rehearse either one. But in improv, there are games and exercises that practice the guidelines. You do those a whole lot, which builds up a set of habits. So without even thinking about it, you follow those guidelines on stage. And since Alzheimer's affects everyone in an individual way, you really can't prepare for each interaction by sitting in a classroom or reading a book. But since improv and Alzheimer's are similar, you can use the guidelines of improv to break through to a person with Alzheimer's. One of those guidelines is accept the reality given to you or step into their world. Um, Ma'am, right there, could you give me an occupation, any occupation? A dancer, thank you very much. So we'll see what that looks like. All right, we have auditioner number 22. <sighs> yes. All right. <laughs> okay, Ready anytime you want to start. <sighs> um, this is a little mixture I like to do between street dancing and ballet. Okay. I just need a little warm up here. <sighs> anytime you're ready. I'm, that's what I'm oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Oh, so... I'm just getting started. Mundy accepted the world that I just gave to him, the world of being a dancer, and he went with it. He could have denied it and went with an idea he already had, or he could have tried to keep me in this reality and there would have been no scene. Sometimes it's incredibly hard to accept and jump into the world of a person with Alzheimer's. Accepting their reality means letting go of ours. Oh, on the radio. They said that song was by the Beatles. I knew them. Now our first reaction is to not jump into their world, but try and pull them back into ours. Oh, <laughs> there's no way you really knew the Beatles. I'm sure you just heard them on the radio. But what we can do is accept where they are and jump into their world. They said that song was by the Beatles. I knew them. Wow, that's amazing. Tell me about it. It was amazing, but there were all these girls screaming all the time. It was a little frightening. Mm -hmm. Stepping into their world provides a launching off pad that is positive instead of a response that is negative. It provides a connection, a connection you can talk about, have a conversation. An extension of stepping into their world is going with the flow. Let's see that first scene of a dancer, and we're going to extend it to see going with the flow. All right. Uh, see, we have auditioner number 439. Yes. Are you ready? Yes, I Go am. Go right ahead. It's a combination of street dancing and ballet. Great. Yes. Great. Wow. We've never seen that here before <laughs> at the uh, National... Academy of Ballet. I know. Uh, it's new. It is new. Yes. I, I'm ex I like to explore the world of incompetent dancing. Oh, <laughs> we're going to put a big check right next wow. to you for that. It's, that was great. Cutting edge. You are. <laughs> Thank you. Going with the flow. Going with the flow is really the crux of improv, being spontaneous, really accepting and being ready for whatever comes your way. You never know what the next moment might hold. 
And you know, that's exactly the same for being with a person who has Alzheimer's. Be ready and accepting for whatever comes your way. Go with the flow. To allow going with the flow, improvisers practice saying yes and. Now, it's crucial to commit to saying yes and, not yes but, because really no one wants a big but on stage. You want to say yes and. Sir, I imagine I have an object in my hand that you took a picture of. What is it? Softball. Softball. Okay, this is a tough hitter. All right. All right, here's the ball. I'm behind the plate. I don't, I don't, whatever you pitch is gonna be, you're just gonna have to do your fastball. Yes, and I'm uh, gonna sneak a little spit on it. Yeah, good idea, good Yeah, because this softball tournament, boy, this team from Pizza Hut is really tough. Yeah, I know. Okay, that wasn't good. That oh. Wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> the guideline of yes and is so that there aren't a lot of no's on stage. No's stop the flow. No's disagree. No's deny others' ideas. No's make it not so interesting. I want to go home. Yes, and tell me about your home. Oh, I grew up on a goat farm. They were fainting goats, so difficult to milk. <laughs> yes, and provides agreement. It provides validation, even empathy. Persons with Alzheimer's are receiving no's in different forms all the time, whether they're actual verbal no's, mental no's, or physical no's. Oh, oh, no, no, Mr. Carter, your room isn't down this way. It's over there. Oh, look at your shirt, Mr. Carter. Let me fix that. You can't even button it right anymore. Oh, you know what, Mr. Carter? Let's seat you down in a wheelchair because we don't want you to fall when you're going to the dining room. No, no, no. So for a person living with Alzheimer's, the word yes can feel really good. Let's look at a caregiving situation, but this time I won't follow the guidelines of improv. I love being on the porch. Uh-huh. Did you know I used to roller skate up and down this street? No, Mom, actually, you never roller skated on this street. Yes, I, I, I used to fall, no, right? No, Mom, you roller skated in West Virginia. Yes. And We're in North Carolina. Betty's house is no, right. No, Mom, Betty's house is in West Virginia. You moved in here with us years ago. Did you know I used to roller skate up and down the street? Now let's look at that same situation. This time I'll follow the guidelines. I love being on the porch. So do I. Did, did you know I used to roller skate up and down the street? Yes, and I bet you were a good roller skater. Oh, not really. I used to fall all the time, but I loved it. My, my friends had roller skates too. Oh, so you all roller skated up and down this street? Yes. Together. Up and down this street. Would you like to roller skate with me sometime? I would love to. <laughs> right now, there are 5.3 million people living with Alzheimer's disease. By the time my generation, the baby boomers, reach their peak in 2030, there'll be over 8.4 million people living with the disease. We're all for funding research, and we're all for finding a cure, but what about right now? What about the 16 million friends and family members who are taking care of people with Alzheimer's? What about those working in care communities across the United States? This solution, this approach is not a solution to every issue that comes about with Alzheimer's disease, yet we know it can help those who are struggling day to day to find connection 
to have relationship, and for everybody to have a better quality of life. So, let's say yes and. Agree, don't deny. Accept offers and gifts. Be specific. Listen fully. Accept the reality given to you. Go with the flow. Commit 100%. Let's be in the moment. Thank you.